What's up everybody? True Boxing here. Thank you for coming back to get hit with the truth. So today we're doing the um, what's next on Robson Konsaichel, the now two-time former world title challenger following a tough 12-round um, unanimous decision loss to Shakur Stevenson as uh, Stevenson came in overweight, uh, decided to not make the weight, got stripped of the belts. The fight went forward. Konsaichel was able to compete for the two vacant titles but he, came, he lost the fight, came up short. I'm really disappointed in Stevenson with this one just because, you know, it, to me, this was a battle of the top two guys at 130. And, um, you know, it would have went a long way into proving, you know, uh, even, I have no doubt that Stevenson would have won this fight no matter what. But, um, you know, for both of them to be on weight, you know, it, it, it makes a difference in, you know, now we, we're we not going to know how it would have been, but, you know, can Saichal still lost, but I don't think he needs to be penalized for for any of this moving forward. So now the big question is, what's next for Robson can Saichal? So, um, first off, I don't believe the WBC should punish him and drop him in the rankings. It's not his fault that Stevenson came in overweight and didn't even try to make weight. And he fought a naturally bigger guy. And we don't know how bad Kinsaichow struggled to uh, make the weight. So, you know, that sh he should not be punished for that. So I think he should hold his position at number two in the WBC. And if it were up to me, I, I think he should, uh, he should be able to fight the next highest available contender. Um, and, you know, his next fight should be a mandatory fight. That's my opinion. Um, we'll get to, back to that in, uh, at the end of this, but let's run through the top 10 and see what else could possibly be there. So we start with um, Stevenson out. We start with Oscar Valdez, a rematch. Not likely. Valdez is the the WBO's number two contender, he, or three contender, I believe. He's right there to compete for the WBO belt if he wants. Um are, well, he has the option of competing for the WBO title, so um, the vacant title, but he's planning on coming back um, in the beginning of the year, likely a tune-up, and then maybe he fights Archie Sharp, but he definitely is not going to fight Kinsaicho. I'll, I'll tell you that right now. Valdez, I think a lot of people feel, myself included, that he lost the fight to Kinsaicho, and unless they're unifying belts, I don't see Valdez lining up, especially coming off of that loss to Stevenson, so not there. Um, Shavkat Rakimov, uh, the undefeated former uh, world title challenger. Well, that fight's not going to happen next because Rakimov is lined up to fight for the vacant IBF title now. Cordina got stripped due to an injury, and now you're going to see Rakimov fight Zelfa Barrett for the vacant title at some point in the next couple months, most likely. And, um, you know, that's just not it so that fight's not going to be there for Kinsai Cho. Then you got Joe Cordina. Well, Joe Cordina messed up his hand. He needs surgery. He's probably going to fight the winner of Rakimov and Barrett next year sometime. So that's what you can plan on that one. Um, Ro Roger Gutierrez. I uh, Roger Gutierrez um, wants to compete at. Um, I mean, he. He's coming off the loss. He also fights for the zone. He lost to Hector Garcia. Not sure if the zone is going to get together with top rank to make a fight like this. I'd like to see it, but I don't think they're going to do it. Hector Garcia, the WBA champion, he's tied to the PBC. Um, I think he's going to fight Colbert or somebody of that nature first. Um, you know, I think he's going to stay more PBC, uh, than, and, and I don't see top rank. Um, and the PBC interested in a fight with Kensai Chow. Lamont Roach Jr., he's lining himself up to get to become the mandatory for the WBA against Hector Garcia, so I don't think Lamont Roach is going to want to fight um, Robson Kensai Chow unless it's going to be an eliminator. Um, if it's an eliminator, maybe he'd consider that, but he's already number one in the WBA right now, so we'll see. Then you got Zelfa Barrett. Zelfa Barrett's lined up to fight uh, Rakimov for the vacant IBF title, so He's not going to take a back seat and uh, work with top rank to fight Kinsaicho in a non-title fight. Kenichi Ogawa, he's tied with Matchroom and Eddie Hearn. I don't think they're going to get together with Kinsaicho 
especially Ogawa coming off a knockout loss to Cordina. I don't think they're going to get together with Kinsaicho, uh, so I don't see that one. And Eduardo Ramirez has dropped out of my top 10. So I, I really don't see a clear top 10 option for Robson Kinsaicho next, but that might not be that big of a deal, and I'll tell you why. What I think should happen, could and should happen, one of two options. I believe Kinsai Chow's ranked easy. I, I think he's ranked either higher or lower, one spot higher or lower than Valdez at 126. I mean, in the WBO, he might be able to get Archie Sharp in the ring for the vacant title for the WBO. But if he holds his spot at number two in the WBC, we know Oshaki Foster and Ray Vargas are going to fight for the vacant WBC title now at 130. If they allow Kinsaichel to fight in a final eliminator in his next fight, which I think they might, like, and the next highest available contender would be Valdez, but Valdez probably won't take the rematch. Then there's Eduardo, uh, Eduardo Hernandez, I think the guy's name is. And I think that fight becomes very possible, and I think I think they can, um, you know, they can make a fight there. I think that's logical. I think I don't think the WBC is going to punish Kinsaichao and drop him in the rankings for when he lost to a guy that was overweight. So I think if he holds that spot down, Foster fights Vargas for the vacant title. Kinsaichao is the next highest available contender. They let him fight in an eliminator against um, against Ramir, uh, Eduardo Hernandez. And I think Kinsaichao by the first half of next year is a mandatory number one contender and is getting a third title shot for the third year in a row against the winner of Vargas and Oshaki Foster um, sometime next year. So, Kinsaicho, in my opinion, is still very good. He still sits at, at, at near the top of the uh, super featherweight division. He, he, he deserves that. And I think there's a good chance that he... Um, it's a wide open division. I think there's a good chance that he can move himself into position for a title shot next and set up potentially a unification bout at some point um, if the right guys are champions in the division. But it's a wide open division at 130. No shame in losing to a guy like Stevenson, but he now has that added excuse of, hey, the guy was overweight and I wasn't, and I still went and fought him. So. We'll see what happens, but that's what I got. That's what's next on former two-time world title challenger Robson Kinsaichel following his decision loss to an overweight Shakur Stevenson on September 23rd. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, smash the like button, leave a comment, subscribe to the channel. I appreciate any and all support. This is True Boxing. You've been hit with the truth.